Today is the last Sunday of Kingdom Prayer, and we want to look at the great works of Jesus and the promise from him that we can do greater works. Our scripture references for this morning are John 14, 11 through 13, Philippians 1, 3 through 6, and Colossians 1, 9 through 11. All are from the uh, NIV translation of the Bible. Now let us look at the passage from John first. This passage is a part of the instructions that Jesus left for his disciples. Jesus left many instructions to his disciples. The ones recorded can be found in chapters in, that are recorded in John can be found in chapters 13 through 16. But this passage reads, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Verse 13, and I will do whatever you ask, in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus tells us in verse 11 that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. But just before in verse 10, Jesus says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own. Instead, it is the Father dwelling in me, performing his works. Then he says, believe me, trust what I am telling you. You've got to get this right. There must be a connection. If we are to do greater works, what works then did Jesus do while on his earthly ministry? While here on earth, Jesus did the work the Father gave him to do. Some of the works the Lord Jesus did were, he preached the gospel. Jesus served the people. Jesus sought and saved the lost. He preached the kingdom of God and he sowed the seed of the kingdom and he taught the truth. He also healed all manners of diseases. He gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk and the deaf hear, and he even gave life to the dead. These miracles were accomplished because of the faith of the believer in Jesus Christ who was in the Father, and the Father was in him. Greater works than these? Yes, Jesus says we will do greater works if we believe in him. You will be able to do what I am doing and even greater things. Why? We ask, and he says, because I am going to the Father. Greater throughout the worldwide preaching of the gospel, affecting spiritual redemption and salvation, and adding multitudes of people to the body of Christ since the day of Pentecost. These are greater works that Christian men and women have been doing since the day of Pentecost. Churches all over the world feed, clothe, and house millions of people at their time of need. All forms of Christian counseling services abound all over the earth. Prison ministries are here. And just as Paul and Silas gave salvation to the jailer when he asked, what must I do? Prison ministries abound. Jesus did not come just to heal and feed the people. 
He came to care for and to serve them. He gave himself up for us. We must preach and teach the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus did. Jesus sowed seeds of the kingdom. When we believe and receive the word, we become the seeds of life. And wherever we go, we are sowing the seeds of the kingdom. Jesus always spoke the truth, and so should we. He did not speak the truth as other teachers had. He taught and spoke with authority. He spoke the truth about the gospel, about salvation and forgiveness of sins, and about the kingdom of God. And when we speak the truth, we must speak with the authority of J that Jesus gave us and speak boldly, thus says the Lord. We cannot accomplish anything unless we are connected. If we walk into a dark room and try to turn on a lamp and the lamp is not plugged into the electric socket, the light will not come on. The source is there, the electric socket, but the lamp is not connected. Plug the lamp into the source of power and then turn it on. The room will be illuminated. The same with us. We must be connected to the source of power to be the, a light to this world. Let's look at Paul and his works. Paul knew about being connected to the power source. Acts 9 tells us about Paul's encounter with the power source. The light that shone from heaven on the road to Damascus was so bright that Paul was blinded. Jesus was that light. And at that moment, he surrendered his will to the will mm -hmm. of God. This was a spectacular event that changed Paul forever. For now it was Christ that lived in Paul. He had then the mind of Christ and was ready to do greater works. Paul wrote many letters during his ministry, and almost all of his letters were written to Gentile communities. He most certainly worked with Jewish communities during his journey, but his principal audience was the Gentiles. Paul helped to expand Jesus' ministry to include not just the Jewish believers, but to all races and ethnic groups. For the way, as the first Christian church was called, was for all who believed in Jesus Christ, Jews and Gentiles. And Paul sought out the non-Jew to bring them the message of the crucified Savior. But what about us in 2020? The early Christians thought that Jesus would be returning during their lifetime. Now, how can we, as 21st century Christians, walk in that same promise of greater works? Well, First comes prayer. We must be connected to the power source before we can let our light shine in a dark world. We must seek God's face. We often talk about seeking God's face, but what does it mean? It means we are seeking to know him, to understand his character, and hear his voice. When Paul was thrust into the light of Jesus, he had no choice but to seek his face. And he then received his instructions on what he must do to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Now, let me be clear. Since the first church, the way was formed, Christians have formed so many denominations based on as many reasons as there are denominations until I believe that we have forgotten 
about God's kingdom. God's kingdom leaves no one out. Now, if we can look at Colossians 1, 9 through 11, and it says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in all good works, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Paul is telling the Colossians to live a life that is worthy of the Lord. The results will be that you will grow in wisdom and knowledge as you learn of his character and become like him. Therefore, you will bear fruit in every good work that you do. You will be able to do greater works. You will be light and salt to this world. For God will strengthen you to endure with patience the race that has been set before you, and you will live a joyous and thankful life. Here at Calvary, we have collectively and individually assisted others with food, clothing, and other needs of life. We stand open as a place of comfort for this community as we not only preach the word of God, but we live by his teachings so that others may see Christ in us and want to know more about Jesus. As Jesus said, believe me, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You can see the evidence of this by my good works. Therefore, when Christ is in you and you are in Christ, you will do greater works. How? Jesus says, I am going to the Father and anything that you ask in my name, I will do. I will do it so that the Father can be glorified in the Son because the Father is in me and I am in the Father. So if the Father is glorified through the Son and the Son is in you and you are in the Son, your works will glorify the Father who is in heaven. Asking for what you want in Jesus' name it's not just something that you tack on to your prayers as a command to God to give you what you want. No, it's not. And as our prayer life strengthens, as it has done this month, and as we begin to seek God's face, our will begins to line up with God's will, and we begin to pray kingdom prayer. Our prayer focus widens and we begin to pray kingdom prayers for the world in the name of Jesus. And his will will be done on earth. The last command that Jesus left his disciples and his followers is found in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And we know it as the Great Commission. And it says, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age.
And Jesus gave a similar command before his ascension into heaven. And it's found in Acts 1, the eighth verse. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It was seems clear that we must carry the word of God to the ends of the earth. 21st century Christians have modern technology to reach more people with the gospel than ever before possible. Right now, God has placed us in our homes for the most part. And we are being obedient. And while we're being obedient, we are praying and seeking his face and meditating on his word. Now, when God releases us, we will be ready. We will be able. And we will be willing to bring light where there is darkness and comfort to those who are weary. So Calvary, get connected, plug in to the source so our lights may shine in all corners of darkness for greater works we must do. Thank you and amen.